Frugalsim videos are powered by Jetline Systems. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and this is going to be a bit of an adventure. I'm going to be taking a look at the Wing 42 Blario, or Blario 11, that was recently released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a really cool aircraft. If I give you the specs of it, it doesn't sound cool at all. So you have no speedometer, no altimeter, it's really hard to fly, it doesn't corner very well, it doesn't climb very well, it's a challenge to even keep it up in the air, but that's why it's so cool. This is the first aircraft to ever make an international flight. Louis Blario flew it for from uh, Le Ducap, which is where I'm going to be flying from here over to over the English Channel to England. He actually landed the aircraft in a field, I think, close to Dover Castle. We are going to try to find an airport. There's one actually just past Dover, if we even make it. Now, I've spent a bit of time with this aircraft. It's a huge challenge. I absolutely adore it. And it's a huge challenge because, well, this is the first aircraft to feature joystick control in, in the real world, okay? And it didn't have ailerons for actually turning or anything like that. Instead, what it had was a wing warping system. So as the pilot moved the, the joystick in the cockpit such as it is, uh, depending on the pilot's strength, it would actually pull various steel cables and actually warp the shape of the wing. Now, because of that, most modern sims, including this one, Microsoft Flight Simulator are not really set up to handle that kind of aerodynamics modeling. So Wing 42 enlisted the help of aerodynamics expert Pamela Booker to do the flight model on the aircraft, and she's done an outstanding job. The Wing 42 Blerio ships with three variants and a number of liveries. So we have the Blerio 11 Anzani. The, the Anzani is the first engine that was put in the actual Blerio. It's hideously underpowered, doesn't do a very good job of anything. It's, it's weak. It's hard to fly. This has a slightly dumbed down flight model as well. It's a little bit easier to fly in a sim, but it's still a huge challenge. Then we have the Anzali RIP edition. This has all the uh, training wheels removed. It is a very realistic flight model, very, very hard to fly. I've not flown that one. And that would be more akin to the one that actually did that first cross-channel flight by Louis Blerio. And then we have a later version of the Blerio, the Blerio 11, powered by a GNOME Omega engine. This one is a little bit easier to fly. You can see it's got much better um, speed. It's got better max altitude, better endurance, and so on and so on. We are going to fly, and this is my first time flying it, the Blerio 11 Anzani RIP edition. Okay, this is going to be a challenge. And what I plan to do, I was actually going to do a review of this and shoot a lot of B-roll of it and write a script and then record the script. I'm trying to get into a new way of recording videos to get back on track. We're putting content up on this channel. I was going to do that, and then I was going to do this flight in the more traditional frugal sim way, which is jump in the cockpit and fly it. I decided this morning, screw it, let's just jump in the cockpit and fly it, and we'll treat that as kind of a, a review slash first impressions. Review because, as I said, I've spent a bit of time in the 11 Anzani so far. Absolutely love it. Despite how simple it is, how ridiculously hard to fly it is and everything else, I love it. I've spent no time, however, in the Anzani RIP edition, the more realistic one. So in that respect, it's a first impressions, although it is kind of a review. Now, to set the challenge correctly, I've got the flight conditions somewhat easy, so there's a slight wind, 4 knots wind, a 270. It's mixed, you know, a little bit of cloud in the skies, nothing crazy. When Louis Blerio made his flight, it was actually early in the morning with limited visibility, low cloud, some mist, and it was a bit of a problem for him to actually navigate. I'm not going to go that far, I've got enough of a challenge with the aircraft itself. So we're going to do that, but we're not going to be using any maps, we're not going to be using any visual aids to figure out where to go. We're just going to take off and head in a westerly direction because if we were to go in a westerly direction we should end up here lid airport near dover that's the plan don't know how well we're going to make it let's look here by the way when we take off we're looking for a point here bear in mind there's no navigation aids at all in this aircraft it is entirely visual i was actually thinking of doing this in vr but bottled out at the last minute we're going to be looking at this point as it dips into the english channel we're going to fly from this point and if we go west we're actually going to miss but we're looking for this point over here on the english coast and if we go north from there we should find an airport no idea if we're even going to be able to land this thing louis blerio didn't actually technically land he crash landed in the field but uh, so if i fail and crash land then i did as good as he did his flight took about 30 minutes i think we can do about the same let's jump in here and see how we do now in terms of controls so you've got my joystick here which is doing everything that the joystick should do. It's warping a wing and all that good stuff. And I have my throttle set up. I'm flying with the Thrustmaster Warthog set up here. The throttle in the actual aircraft doesn't do very much at all. 
It really doesn't. To control speed, they actually had a blipper which cut power to the engine. I've got that mapped to my joystick here so I can cut power to the engine. Don't do it for too long. The engine will die completely and you can't restart it in the air. So don't do that. It's very, very quick tap, 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 tap to blip the engine to try to get the speed under control as we come into land. We'll see how we do on that one. Should be a bit of a challenge, but I thought... If we're going to get historic aircraft like this in a sim, it makes sense to try, try to recreate some of those historic flights. The first one, of course, being that first ever international transatlantic, not transatlantic, trans-channel flight. Oh my god, I've set the time wrong, haven't I? Because dark is not what I was aiming for. All right, let's see if I can... Here I am. Okay, aircraft's running. That's a good sign. Let's pop up here. Uh, I'll go over here, weather, time... There we go. That's a little better, isn't it? Let me show you around here. So this is the cockpit. That's it. Nothing to see here at all. There's the joystick, such as it is. It's basically a crowbar stuck in a bowling ball. And if we move the crowbar, you can see the wing actually bends. And again, Pamela has done a wonderful job at trying to map the physics of this and the flight model of it into Microsoft's new sim. To take off, well, power is currently full right now. It's not going to be very effective, but we need to look down here. We need to pull the wheel chocks. And as soon as I do that, this thing's going to start moving. And it is going to be all over the place. I actually, in my notes on this, likened it to flying a helicopter. You're really doing a rudder dance to try to keep this thing stable all the way down the runway. But we'll see how we do. And then we're going to take off, find the sea, and head that way. Good luck, Pete. Here we go. Okay, you can see we're moving. I am actually dancing on the rudders already. It is so slow and so sluggish. And the runway at uh, this slow speed feels so short. Okay, once we get a bit of momentum, I'm going to push forward on the stick. Now, I'm noticing to the right here I have a drop. Whoa! Down a hill, ridge line. We're going to use that because this thing doesn't like to gain altitude very well at all. Man, this is hard compared to the... Uh, slightly dumbed down Anzani version again this is the RIP edition the more realistic one I'm going to use all of the runway whoa still dancing like crazy I should have put the camera on and I actually have the joystick tanked over to the right at this point because the wings seem to want to turn there we go and we're up so we are actually flying this is a momentous historical occasion look at this because this is the first aircraft to ever actually do these crazy flights. There's the peak I'm looking for out into the English Channel over there. So we're actually going to turn, such as turning is in this aircraft, it is crazy hard towards that peak. And then we'll just follow its point, I guess. Now I'm trying to level out, and I'm trying not to kill my airspeed. No idea of my airspeed. No idea of my height. All I can do is look out to the side, which is why I'm using Track IR right now, to try to gauge my altitude. Which is a cool thing, actually, about using Microsoft Flight Simulator, because you have such good scenery. It's actually not too difficult to gauge roughly how high you are. I think I'm about 200 feet, maybe 100 feet right now. And really having a hard time getting any speed. Now, again, very, very basic aircraft. No autopilot, no flight aids at all. So, you need to be all over this aircraft. It doesn't like any kind of wind whatsoever even the slightest breeze will upset it so you need to be controlling this aircraft you need to fly this aircraft and that's really why I'm falling in love with this thing it's so engaging no systems or complex stuff to deal with like that but it is such an engaging aircraft to fly because you really need to be all over the rudder pedals and the joystick to keep this thing where you want it to be otherwise you'll simply crash uh... And every second, every meter traveled feels like an achievement. Because right now I feel like the aircraft's about to stall. I'm not sure it is. If I let go of the joystick, you can see it wants to turn to the left. And then it will rock back to center. The nose yawing around like a sailboat in a stiff breeze. I want to get more height. The other challenge we have, of course, is that once we hit that point and start flying out towards England, you have no landmarks underneath you to gauge your altitude or your speed. You're flying over water. It doesn't really give a good sense of feedback as to anything that you're doing. 
which is part of the problem, I think, in the achievement of Louis Blériot's initial flight over the English Channel here. My God, it does feel like any second I'm just going to drop out of the sky. Gosh. Wonderful sound set in this aircraft. Very, very accurate sound set, apparently. And you can see the animations there of the cylinders firing. Little twin-cylinder Anzani lawnmower engine on the front. I wonder if I can nose down to pick up some speed and then climb. Let's see what this does. Now, there are some concessions in the real sim, even with the RIP edition here. You can actually trim it. You couldn't trim the real aircraft, but that's helpful. So I did actually just trim it there, just to try to keep me somewhat constant. Holy cow. You can see a shadow in the distance over the sea there. I wonder if that is the English coast. We do have a fairly clear day. We might be able to see from here. Calais is just up there. I know that you can see Dover from Calais on a clear day. Let's see how we do. Now, as you saw when I took off, turning is something to be considered. Look, look at the joystick. The joystick is all the way over right now, and we're slowly turning. Don't even think about putting this in a pattern and doing a clear, easy pattern like you would in a Cessna. It's just not capable of that. It takes a lot of coaxing and a lot of patience to get this aircraft to do anything. Love it. All right, so we're actually heading the right way-ish. That's got to be the English coast over there, right? That big black line? Has to be. And you can see how much this aircraft is already moving around. It's so hard to control this. What do you think I am altitude-wise here? 500 feet? Not even that, right? Maybe 300? Let's get a little bit of speed. I have no idea if I'm descending at this point. I think I might be. And I want to get some altitude as I head out over the channel, if I possibly can. I think that's going to be useful if something untoward does happen. And it probably will. Beautiful French countryside. The northern French coastline. Normandy. Hello, I turn my head, you can hear the wind in my ears. Look at that. Huge concrete slab in the back for ballast. To try to balance the aircraft a little bit. God. And again, that's going to be an issue, actually. Uh, right now, I'm using the point on the land to gauge my heading. Once I start heading out over the English Channel, I can't do that. So, we're going to have to rely on clouds a little bit and point the aircraft at a certain cloud formation and try to keep it there, knowing that in the sim, as in real life, clouds move. So, that's a challenge, too. Isn't this crazy? Canvas, wood, wires, that's it. And a lawnmower. Alright, as we head out to the point at which we're going to turn east-ish, trying very hard to gain some altitude. It's a slow process. Still dancing on the rudder pedals. The rudders are actually more authoritative, authoritative than the wing warp in terms of pointing the aircraft somewhere. Still trying to climb. It feels like this is climbing. But, look, I have the joystick all the way over. Oh, and as soon as I let go of the joystick, it just plummets. Look. RIP edition. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Okay, I think this is good enough. So let's turn and hope that we're heading towards England. And again, you cannot turn too hard. You need to plan. You need to watch the angle of bank. Go too far, you'll simply spin the aircraft. And then you're done. There's no spin recovery in this thing. So think of that for a second. That's That ignites my uh, uh, interest as well. No spin recovery, no stall recovery, really. The aircraft couldn't get high enough. So if you do spin it in particular, you don't have enough altitude to try to recover the aircraft. So a spin is fatal in this aircraft. And this is turn of the century, last century aviation history flying this thing and you really feel it, wing 42 
have done an amazing job. Now, I'm turning my head quite a lot. I know many of you don't like it when I use track IR on these videos, but this time I kind of have to. I have to keep some kind of visual reference to how the aircraft is doing with respect to the French coast as we head out towards England here. I'm looking at cloud formations up ahead, and I'm going to try to keep that center bar overhead lined up with this cloud formation here and I'm hoping that that dirty black line on top of the sea in the distance is the English coast and you can already see here look if we just don't look back how high am I can you tell no idea let's see if we can make it see if we can recreate this iconic very very famous flight now I in reading the manual by the way the aircraft ships with a 20 page manual Doing this off the top of my head, memories. A 20 page manual and a 30 odd page ebook, and the ebook details the history of the aircraft itself, which is kind of cool. They do describe three or four flights that were all record setting and historic in nature with this aircraft. The English Channel one is the first of them, but someone actually flew this across the Alps, which strikes me as just insanity, but they did it. So maybe I have to spend some time and recreate some of those other flights as well. That would be kind of cool, right? still putting all my effort into holding the aircraft straight clouds have already changed position or changed formation which isn't very helpful i'm still where i was isn't that funny isn't it? you look back and you're like oh i've hardly moved any good the nerve and the sense of adventure the pioneering pilots must have had to jump in an aircraft like this and try what was previously considered impossible is staggering and that again is why I think I'm so in love with this aircraft it really captures the essence of some pivotal moments in aviation history and it's a huge challenge to try to recreate what those people did still barely moving very little definition on what I think is the English coastline up ahead. Still very close to France. And if we look down, still absolutely no clue as to my altitude. It is fascinating. Look at that wing. They got the wing shape right. Turn of the century aviation. They actually figured out the wing shape absolutely correctly. That's not much different to a Piper, like a, a Comanche wing or a Cherokee wing. That Hershey bar wing. Really the same shape. What they got wrong is that wing warping. If they'd just figured out that ailerons work the same way as an elevator on the back, this probably would have been a much easier aircraft to fly. This did actually see service, though, beyond these initial fumbling steps into the world of flight. It actually saw service as a recon aircraft in uh, the First World War. A very easy target to shoot down, I would imagine, as well. There it is utterly incredible it's very majestic isn't it just kind of hovering in the breeze they've done such a great job at modeling this aircraft anyway let's get back in the cockpit where am I okay so I'm starting to turn the wrong way so let's turn the aircraft back a little bit There we go, that should be good. And try to hold it there for a few minutes. Now, I think Louis Blerio, because it was low visibility, he actually got lost. And he ended up going that away, which is north, and then having to turn back. So not only did he cross the channel, but he actually went the long way. Any idea of my altitude? Am I descending? It feels like I might be. Uh, hard to tell. I'm hoping, with the way I set the weather up, we're just using a weather theme, that the conditions don't change, which means there's a 4 knot wind at 270. So if we can make it to the right place and hopefully find Lid Airport, I'm not guaranteeing we will, then I need to be choosing 270-ish uh, for the runway 27, if there is a runway 27. I didn't even look. And bearing in mind, of course, in 1918 or earlier, when, when did Louis Blerio make his life? But whenever he made it, it must be before 1918, uh, they didn't have airports. So 
when he made it over here, there was no airport to look for. It was just ditch it in the nearest flat field and hope for the best. There are still a couple or a few of these around in the world today. They do still fly, but they limit them to short hops. So basically, you taxi down, run, you know, uh, accelerate down a runway, take off, and land straight away because they're so rare and valuable. Incidentally, you can cold and dark this aircraft. There is a configuration you can choose which lets you do a cold and dark start. You can also taxi the aircraft if you wish, but that's not very realistic because in the real world, taxiing this would be uh, the work of three or four men pushing the aircraft on the ground. But you can if you really want to. That's where the non-RAP versions of this airframe come into play. It does actually have some ability to taxi and uh, navigate on the ground. Yep, that's the English coast. I think I'm going the right way. I mean, I'm certainly heading towards England. I just don't know if I'm heading where I want to be in England. Still holding that right wing into the wind, such as it is. And it's not even a strong wind. Four knots. And trying to keep the nose of the aircraft pointed towards the clouds up ahead. Conscious, of course, that those clouds do move and change shape over time. Just like in the real world. It's interesting flying this with the Thrustmaster Warhog. As I've said in previous videos, the Warhog is quite a heavy stick. has about an 8-pound spring or more. So holding the stick over like this is actually pretty tiring. Not as tiring, I'm sure, as holding that stick in the real aircraft. But you can at least get a taste of the challenges that the real pilots underwent. Now, I don't know if you can see, you can see, there's a rudder block down there. I'm, I'm really having to work the rudder pedals as well to keep this heading where I want it to be. Very much like a helicopter. The aircraft is so affected by any breeze. It's a very engaging thing to fly. Getting a little bit more definition on the English coastline up ahead now, and if we look behind us, France well and truly fading. Just trying to get a good view of the waves. Yeah, look at the modeling. Oh my goodness. But trying to look at the waves there and the ripples on the water to get some indication at all of my altitude. Or basically some clue that I'm not descending into them. For those of you with VR headsets, I think this would be a great thing to do in VR. Of course, with no aids turned on and really get a sense for how it's just you and the aircraft flying this. I think that would really convey itself well in VR. I just chose at the last minute not to do that. It's hard to film in VR and then hard to edit it down so that you guys get a compelling video to watch. I actually haven't done any flights in Microsoft Flight Simulator with VR, although I was one of the guys pretty vocal about asking for VR initially. I don't like the propeller effect that they do in VR at the moment. It's kind of off-putting, but I will. I'll do some VR flights. Maybe I'll film them. We'll see. Bye, France. See ya. So probably about halfway there, maybe. You can feel this thing moving. You can feel it sliding through the air sideways as well as front uh, forwards. You can almost feel how it's interacting with the air around it. This would be a fun thing to do as a group fly, wouldn't it? Multiplayer. Get a bunch of people with Blario trying to cross the channel. In formation. <laughs> Slight gust of wind and three people crash straight away. Bit more definition now on the English coastline. At the time I'm recording this, they haven't done the UK update yet, so the white cliffs of Dover are not really very white. Now having to put two hands on the joystick, my hand is getting tired holding it to the right all the time. So now holding it with two hands, just try to try to stay level. And I've got the joystick mounted there as well between my legs. I'm using the uh, Fox mount that I reviewed some time ago. Just love that thing. I just can't let go of the stick though. Look, if I let go... What? It's kind of weird. 
So I don't know if you remember, but we said at the beginning, look for a point on the English coastline and then travel north from there. That should take you to Lyd Airport. Getting a bit more definition on the English coastline now, but I don't see that point at all. I think I might be too low. See if we can get a bit more height. I think honestly, once I get over England, it's going to be a question of finding the first runway I can and putting it down there. But with the slow speed of this aircraft, you've got to be real selective. It could take a long time to make it anywhere. But if I can find that point, I had to fly north from that point, so turn right. And I want a westerly runway, so that's going to be pretty easy to figure out if I can land or arrive in England at the right place. Pretty staggering as well to think about how aviation progressed after this flight. You know, you got this with a wing warp system, very, very slow, somewhat unreliable, very, very hard to fly, no altitude. God, look, I have the joystick all the way over at this point. No real altitude, very, very tricky, not really practical. And then only a few years later, we're going to single wing supercharged engines fighting at 10 to 20,000 feet up. Crazy. A lot closer now, and I'm thinking, see if my mouse works. Yeah, I think this is Dover Harbor. Which means we're in the right area, kind of. If that is Dover Harbor, then that makes that there, Dover Castle. So Lid should be around here. That's the theory, anyway. Yep, that's the port of Dover there. Wow, so we're in the right place. You can tell it's the port of Dover because of this seawall here. Which is used to keep things relatively calm for the ferries. So I wonder if that is the point that I saw on the map when we were planning it, which means Lid should be around here. And I wonder if these dots are runway lights. Hard to tell from back here. Or is that Dover Castle right in front of me? That's probably Dover Castle, right? Yeah. So Blerio himself actually landed over there which is now obviously built up. But welcome to England, we've made it. The, uh, a recreation of the first ever international flight and a Blerio 11 in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Pretty cool and a huge challenge. Let's just see if we can find a place to put this down now, preferably an airport. Just scanning around looking for anything that could symbolize the airport. Though, as I said, technically I could land it in a field here and I would have done the same as Blerio himself. Oh boy. Getting anxious now and getting tired. Holding the stick. Trying to keep the aircraft somewhat level. wish I could easily get some more height so I can see the area. I don't think I'm going to have much success. And I'm pushing my luck a bit, holding the nose up, trying to climb. So I'm wondering here, at what point do I give up? At what point do I find a field and just put it in that? Because I'm not seeing any sign of an airport. I'm not high enough to get a good view of the surrounding countryside. Let's turn. Let's start a turn to the left. See if we can pick up anything over here. They're feeding in quite a lot of rudder. A little bit of left stick. Now right stick to counter the roll.
and right rudder. Having flashbacks now to some of my IL-2 Sturmovic missions trying to figure out where the hell I am. It's a couple of likely candidates for good fields. Nice road down there as well. I have to find a fairly large field if I am going to put it down in the field. There are no brakes on this aircraft. Okay. So we're going to go for a field, and we're going to go for that one there. See that long field there? I could feasibly do this one, but if I mess up, I'm coming a little bit too long. Without any brakes, I risk running into the trees at the end of it. I still keep looking for the airport itself. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, that field looks like it's got a hedgerow across the middle of it. Look. There. So yeah, this big field on the right here actually does look to be the best bet. Okay. So as I said, throttle really doesn't do much. I have reduced the RPM. I don't want to go too low at this point on the RPM because it will just kill the engine. In terms of controlling speed now, all we have is the blipper. The engine blipper. So basically cut fuel to the engine. Okay, see what we can do. Purely visual landing. No instruments at all. In a large field, there's probably a football pitch. Whoa! Now we're picking up a bit of speed because I'm going down. <laughs> it's becoming very unstable. Oh, that looks like a nice field, doesn't it? Right ahead of me. Oh well, too late. Getting very low now. What, 100 feet? Maybe? Lined up on the field, gonna have a crosswind. A crosswind landing in a Blario 11. Just trying to get lined up on the field a little bit. Lots of right rudder now. As we pass over that bunch of trees up ahead, that's where I'll start with the throttle blips. Need to get a little lower. Huge movements required on the stick on the rudder now. Alright, start blipping. Don't blip for too long, the engine will die. You can hear it doesn't sound happy, does it, after that? Oh. That's me blipping it now. That's the engine cutting out. You keep hearing as me messing with the blipper. Just trying to get some reduction in my speed a little bit. Feel very fast. Oh my god. Engine's gonna die. Engine died. Okay. This is it. Nice field. Beautiful field. Love this field. See if we can gently put it down and try not to roll. Lots of left rudder now. Left stick, left rudder, left stick, left rudder, right stick, right rudder, right rudder, right rudder, shit, no, ah. Okay, so a little bit of a scrape. We did the same thing at Louis Blario. 
but we're alive. Holy cow, that was a challenge. Let me show the outside view here. External, there we go. So, a little bit of a bonk at the end there. Wrecked the undercarriage, just like Louis Blériot did. But we made it. The first international flight in an aircraft recreated in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the Wing 42 Blario 11, which is available right now from Wing 42's website. See the video show notes below for the princely price of, I think, 19 euros and 99 cents. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon.